Hey Yard Nerds, I'm at you with another watercolor illustration and another watercolor chat. This illustration is part of my ongoing tea illustrations. I have several more videos and several more watercolor chats, all featuring different types of tea. This one is inspired by citrus tea, and it utilizes a different palette than what I normally show on the channel. This is my Naomi palette, so this is palette of colors that I frequently use when I'm painting Naomi from my comic 7 inch Kara. This illustration has been sketched in a Canson XL watercolor sketchbook with Pilot Pink Color Eno Lead. This video is not really a tutorial. I have loads of watercolor tutorials here on this channel. I'll link a few of my favorites down in the description below. I highly recommend if you're just starting out with watercolor, you check out my watercolor basics playlist. I have some really, really great step-by-step -step watercolor tutorials that'll help you feel confident in painting. These watercolor chats are just meant to be kind of a fun, informal way for us to get to know each other. So the palette that I just mentioned, the Naomi palette, it's full of all sorts of colors that I use frequently when I'm painting Naomi's clothes, but don't use in any other context really. So it's full of neons, it's full of very fugitive colors, it's full of colors that have quite a bit of opacity to them. And my two hero colors for this illustration come from this palette today. So in every one of, or almost every one, I think I didn't in the first one, but in most of these watercolor chats, I pick a couple of colors that I really, really like that I wanna talk about and kind of sing the virtues of. So this illustration is very strongly citrus themed. So we've got grapefruit, we've got blood oranges, we've got regular oranges, we've got little bitty kumquats, we've got lemons and we've got limes. And that doesn't even begin to cover the whole gamut of citrus fruit that are out there. If you're interested in citrus fruit, if you're interested in fruit in general, I highly recommend the channel Weird Explorer. He has a fruit explorer series that I've been enjoying quite a bit. So for this really light, bright pink, I'm going to introduce one of today's two hero colors. It would be Kusakabe's Aurora Pink. Now in the past, I did an Unbox and Swatch video where I talked about Kusakabe watercolors. They're a Japanese brand of watercolors. Pretty uncommon in the US, but you can't find them in on Amazon. When I went to Japan a couple years, I picked up a bunch of tubes open stock at Tokyo Hand, and they're really very affordable. And that's my big wah wah is that uh, in almost every other country besides the US, not every country for sure, but many other countries, art supplies are about half the price of what they are here, if not even cheaper. I wish we could really get those prices down, but considering so many art supply distributors are monopolies like Coal Arts, I don't know that we're gonna have a leg to stand on to negotiate for lower prices. So, Aurora pink is probably intensely fugitive because it's very neon and it's this really, really bright pink that can become too intense if you use it on its own. It's basically fluorescent. So I'm toning it down with a Kusakabe's Opera Rose. Now, like I said, I had done a unbox and swatch video on Kusakabe watercolors a while back, but I never got around to doing the field test. Life just got busy and unfortunately YouTube is one of the first things that drops in priority when life starts throwing me lemons. Although we see a lot of lemons here and not only can you make lemonade, you can also make Arnold Palmer's as well as citrus tea. So the other hero color for today comes from Holbein and it would be like Green Nova. I'm gonna double check and have the exact name as well as links to where you can get both these colors in the description below. But it is this somewhat opaque, very bright light green that works really well for painting things like 
delicious limes. You have to be careful how you handle it though because since it is kind of opaque, it can be prone to getting muddy, which is why it's kind of in its own special palette of special handle colors. So the way I like to handle these opaque and semi-opaque watercolors is I like to save them for the very end. I try not to do too much painting on top of them. If I really need to add in some additional detail, I'll either work with a very thick watercolor mix on top of it or I'll use watercolor pencils to add in my final details. So this is actually the second time I've recorded narration for this video. The first time I used the watercolor chat to kind of talk about struggling with burnout and depression. And I decided to re-record the audio for something that's a little bit more upbeat, something that uh, kind of matches the tone of the painting better, frankly, because we have these really cute bright citrus fruits and then I'm talking about struggling with burnout and how 2020 has just been a whole heck of a year and um, I do think being honest and trying to portray my life honestly is important because I do think that um, when we're online we don't really know a lot about each other and it's very easy to make assumptions and to assume that someone's life is a certain way and that comparatively your own life is so much worse and I try to use some of my videos, I try to use my live streams to be kind of honest about my life, to kind of dispel some of those myths and also to kind of create a sense of solidarity among other artists who might be struggling during these times but it's a really difficult balance between being honest and um, be sounding ungrateful and uh, appearing to be angry and uh, just coming across as very depressing. And, you know, I if I had a blog channel, if I was like a lifestyle blogger, there would be room for that. But when you're doing a lot of art videos, it often feels like there's just never a good time or place to talk about what you're going through and what you're struggling with. So um, even though I had tried to make this video one of those spaces, I decided after I recorded it and I thought about it for a little while, I decided that um, that might be a topic that I revisit in the future because it is something I've been thinking about a lot. Um, and a lot of it does still really bother me and I really want to find solutions to it. But I don't think using this particular video for that is necessarily the best way to do that. So for the citrus tea illustration, since the citrus surrounding Kara were really important, I really wanted to make sure I made them look really vibrant and fun and fresh and juicy and like delicious citrus fruit, you know, really, really refreshing. I painted them first and then I kind of worked on the rest of the illustration around it. And people have asked me in terms of inking, what do you ink first? Do you ink the characters or do you ink the background? And watercolor is very similar in that I start working on the things in general. This is broad brush strokes because you know, every illustration is different and every work situation is different. If I come home from a really long day and I'm exhausted and I still have to ink a page, I'm probably gonna start with the faces first because the faces are the area where if you make a mistake, people are gonna notice that straight off and then I'll ink the background around it. Whereas with watercolor, I often start by toning the illustration, putting down a wash of color that kind of ties everything together, creates a theme or it creates a mood in the illustration. And then I work from there. But um, in general, it just kind of depends on what's most important, particularly in these standalone illustrations. So like I have a Marsala Chai video 
where I paint the leaves first because it was really important that I capture this kind of wet into wet blend with those leaves and I wanted to make sure I did that straight away and then I could focus on the rest of the piece. So for me, as an artist who has ADHD, when I am going about illustration, it's really important for me to prioritize and figure out what the priorities are and then it kind of just guides the rest of the piece. Often I allow my decisions from earlier in the piece to influence my decisions later on in the piece and that kind of creates a cohesive whole that doesn't necessarily require as much planning as say some artists might put into their illustrations. I guess the way I feel about that, I think it's great that some people do color comps. If I were doing a really important job for an important client, I would probably do a color comp. But the way I feel is I would rather possibly make the mistakes and start all over again and learn um, because that time is gonna be spent anyway. So it's just a different method of working. And sometimes my compositions, my color compositions aren't quite as strong as I would like. It's always an opportunity to learn and reflect and then try to redo it or to do another one. But I also have very few artistic processes where I am working on the only original I have. Like even with these uh, T illustrations, I've been scanning them because I wanted to use them for coloring pages in the volume two coloring book that's part of the Kickstarter. So in general, I try to capture as many of my steps as possible because it allows me to either rework or it allows me to offer it in a different format later on. So for those of you who are interested in making your own merchandise, this is a really good thing to kind of keep in the back of your mind because a lot of what you do, a lot of what you doodle, a lot of what you're, you sketch can be uh, rethought and retooled and expanded upon to make like a line of merchandise or to make zines or to make coloring pages. So let's use Lilliputian Living, which is my now four year old zine series. Every year I've done a new volume as an example. It originally started as an Inktober exercise, but a lot of us are not doing Inktober anymore or we're flat out boycotting Inktober. So I'm still doing Lilliputian Living, but I'm doing it for myself because I make these, I mean, I've always done it for myself, but now I'm really, really doing it for myself because um, I do a series of 31 illustrations in line art black ink. Generally, I keep the line art kind of light because this allows me to clean them up and then sell those line arts as coloring pages over on Gumroad. And then I also create a body of text. So every illustration has accompanying text and I turn that into a zine, which I then sell at shows when we have shows. And this also creates a possible portfolio of work that I can use to show people some variety in style or some variety in character design. And um, also for some of my watercolor illustrations, I will go back and turn those Lilliputian living sketches into uh, blue line line art, clean them up and then paint over them. And thus something that was, you know, an exercise for one day done over 31 days turns into something that continues to give over and over and over again. And then I think this year I'm going to compile all four volumes into a little print book and offer that. So when you're making merchandise, it, the more you capture your in-between stages and the more you kind of think with an eye of what can I do with this drawing? What can I do with this sketch in the future? the easier it's going to be to put together merch for the first time or to put together a convention table because you're gonna have this organized body of work that you can draw from and it'll require a little bit of polishing and a little bit of rethinking and retooling, but it's not like you're starting entirely from scratch. So before 2020, before COVID-19, I had spent about 10 years doing conventions as a convention artist. Um, I'm a co-founder of How to Be a Con Artist, which is a, used to be a fairly useful convention resource on Tumblr. Everyone says Tumblr dies, so I don't know if the resource is still as valuable as it used to be. I kind of pulled out in 2018 when people nonstop asked about fan art merchandise and fan art prints. I just, that's not where my heart lies. I like talking about original stuff. So I decided I was, I was kind of done working on that. But I've done over 100 conventions over the past 10 years. I've been all over the country, even been into a couple of other countries. So I have a lot of convention experience. And um, 
you know, it's getting to the point where I want to start pulling out of doing so many shows. I mean, 2020 it didn't make that an option for anybody. And I want to start just focusing on a few that I really like. But over that time, I taught a lot of stuff about making your own merch, making your own zines, tabling at shows, what you need to get started. So, um, you know, there might be something useful in the advice that I have to share, especially since I'm like currently kind of stepping away from being as involved in that scene. And I would really like to see more artists with original art and original ideas tabling at shows because it's gotten to be very fan art heavy. And while I don't necessarily have a problem with fan art as an addition to your table, I've sold plenty of fan art myself and I think it's useful to draw new customers in. I do actually have a problem where all of what you're selling is fan art because I feel like it doesn't contribute to a culture of American creators. You are just, in my opinion, it is just continuing to worship creators from another country rather than creating our own unique American canon of comics and comics that were inspired by, say, manga. So I'm a big fan of people selling their original comics at cons. I've done that for years, and I definitely know what a thankless job that can be sometimes because, you know, a 200-page comic that you're selling for $20, it took you forever to make, doesn't sell as well as a $20 fan art print that took you a week to make and you're going to make way better margins on it. So I know how tempting it is to just not sell your original stuff at cons because it's just not as easy a sale. So I totally missed my window to plead with uh, Tombo Furunosuke or Tombo to make Furunosuke brush pens, which I just used to ink in various colors, but I've done that in all the other watercolor chat videos, so I think we're good. So the next step for this is going to be to use some white gouache to add some highlights here and there. And uh, I feel like a lot of the basics I've kind of covered in the other watercolor chats, you'll find those linked in the cards, also in the description below, and they're in their own playlist if you just like having somebody chat with you while you make your own art. When I do live streams on Saturday nights, it's one of my favorite things that people tell me is that they're working on their own stuff and that it, it kind of fulfills that social need for them because um, especially right now when many of us can't really go out and do the things we used to do to scratch that social itch, it's important to find ways to connect with other people and to have relationships with other people and to bond with other people. And uh, if live streams help with that, that's fantastic. All right, another tea illustration completed and uh, ready to go. Might be a postcard, maybe not. I've got so many tea inspired illustrations with Kara right now that it's gonna be difficult to narrow it down to just five for the postcards. But I really like how this one turned out. It just feels really summery and refreshing. Um, I painted this right at the tail end of September, 2020. So we're, we're slipping into fall, but since I live in Louisiana, even though it's a little bit cooler, citrus tea would definitely hit the spot because we still get some really warm days outside. So I hope you guys enjoyed this watercolor chat. I hope it was inspiring and relaxing for you guys. And hopefully it gave you just a little sense of like you're hanging out or a little bit of camaraderie. I'd love to talk more about what's going on in my day-to-day -day life, but like so many other people, not a whole lot changes day to day. So there's not necessarily a whole lot to talk about, but maybe in an upcoming watercolor chat, I'll talk about my just everyday, regular day to day life. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You can find links to more watercolor tutorials down in the description below. And let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.